Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to be sharing my homeschool family subject choices for the 2023-2024 homeschool year. This is in collaboration with other secular homeschoolers, and this is hosted by Cassie from Regular Secular Mama. I'll make sure I link the playlist down below. I have various videos in this playlist, everything ranging from my preschooler to my fifth grader, and now my this is my family subject. So make sure you check out those multiple videos that you will be seeing on that channel list. But this is family subjects. And I have to say, family subjects are some of my favorite subjects to do. I, core subjects are important, don't get me wrong, but fit, group subjects are really where we get a lot of the meat of our homeschool from. So I am a little disappointed. This will be our first year not using Torchlight. We used it the past two years. So this is our third year homeschooling. I have a 10 year old fifth grader going into fifth grade. I have a six and a half year old going into second grade and a three and a half year old doing preschool. This is all about what we'll be doing as a family. And when I say family, my preschool will be in and out of this. He's not obviously required to attend any of this but my fifth grader and second grader will be, of course, um, included in these subjects. So, like I said, we will not be doing Torchlight. We did that the last two years, but we are taking on a bigger history unit this year, and I just didn't want to overwhelm us because there are a lot of components to Torchlight, and I didn't want to skip them because of scheduling conflicts. So we will get back to Torchlight in future years, but for right now, our big <sighs> focus is United States history. And I will start, I guess, with history then. So we've done Curiosity Chronicles the last two years. That was part of Torchlight. We did Medieval and Early Modern. Went great, awesome, really loved the program. They just released, I think, the second part of Mo or the first part of Modern, which is great. But I want to do a deep dive on US history before we go into more modern history, because obviously we went over some of these topics that I'm going to discuss in um, Curiosity Chronicles. But my focus this year, I wanted to give a native indigenous minority perspective of United States history, not the glorified whitewashed version that a lot of is out there. So I did talk about this in ge or in history, the, the, or it was a collab video. The thing I'm most excited about next year, and this was one of them, this is Oh Freedom, a Conscious US History Curriculum. And I got both the K through second and the other version, which I think is third grade and above. And they also have a high school one as well. But I will link up above that video detailing the books that I chose to go with it, how it's outlined, because that would be a really long video in itself. But again, I really want, I want this to be my kids' first full exposure to United States history from the perspective, not necessarily the people that wrote a lot of it. So I want to bring this in. And then next year we will be continuing with US history as well from different perspectives. Because again, I don't think you can rely on one special history curriculum to give you all the perspectives. So we're gonna split history into two years, which or US history, which is fine, because we have a lot to cover. So one of the things, and I'm gonna actually flip you around so you can see better. One of the things I picked up to go with that is this book, Grace Abounding, and it's from Core Knowledge, Core Knowledge, um, African American Literature, Music, and Art. This is a really good resource. I bought this used, so I think it only cost me like $15. I think if you buy it new, it's like $75 on Core Knowledge. What's really nice is Core Knowledge has the teacher guides online for free for this, different ways to utilize this. But I really wanted to do this because it has a lot of primary source documents in it and it goes over different topics because again, we're getting a different perspective on history that I am personally not very familiar with, especially with my public school education. So I want to be um, pulling different things from this as a resource. So it has poetry, spirituals, music, speeches. So speeches and letters especially is something I know we're going to be um, utilizing a lot for US history. But I think this will be a great resource and something we will continue to use um, as the years go on. To give you a look at some of that. 
And it does have different parts where, you know, discussion questions and things like that. If you just want to use this resource as is, but I want to interweave it in the next two years when we're learning U.S. history. So that is something I'm excited to use, and it is a big, big book. So we will also be doing for U.S. history. We did this last year with Torchlight, and we really liked it. And it's just different recipes um, throughout U.S. history, and it does have some, you know, informational history things as well. But we made ice cream last year, and the kids really like that. So when we're going through a specific time period, we might pull one of these recipes out. And then I picked this up as well. I think this is really important for kids to understand how our government works, especially with all the craziness that's going on with our world and unfortunately things being overturned and losing rights. I want my kids to understand their voice matters. And if they disagree with what the government is doing and taking rights away from people that they have a voice and their vote matters. So we are going to be going over this as well as we tight. And I think it breaks it down um, in a way that kids can understand, you know, how the government works, how Congress works, how voting works, because it can be pretty complicated. Politics can be a complicated thing to learn about. So I think it will tie in nicely to, we will also be going over geography. So when you get into things like electoral college, so that is one of the only books I picked up to go with U.S. history. Next, let's go into geography because that ties into it. So I got a bunch of different geography resources. So the main thing I will be using is core knowledge geography, and that's completely free online geography of America. I'll put a screen um, slide of it, but it goes over different territories, different things, breaks the United States into obviously different regions. So when we go through different regions, we'll be talking about those specific states. So that's my main thing I'm working from. And then I just bought things to add on to that. So I bought this at the dollar store and it's just a dry race United States. And I thought that would be good to have on hand for the kids when we're talking about it. When we go through geography and the regions in core knowledge, I got this state book because I want my kids to fill this out. So a picture of something that's in, that they think is interesting in that state. And then it came with stickers. I got this off Rainbow Resources. Comes with the state flower, the bird, and the state tree. So they will um, put those in and then they'll fill out the information. We'll go over that. And there's one obviously for each state. I really like that they have the world map up there too because you get to shade in, or sorry, the United States map up here. They get to shade in what um, state they're talking about. So we're gonna be learning about those regions and also learning about obviously the states, the capitals, the important things. So the books I got to go with filling that information out and just learning more about is these. So this was a library book sale. I got this for 25 cents. So I think this will just be interesting facts and things to know. Okay. And I also, this is one I purchased. This is a DK, the 50 states. And again, I think they'll like that it, well, it shows you the state facts, but it also gives you other information about the states, which I think my kids will like learning about. And again, it breaks it into regions, just like core knowledge will be doing. So that'll be pretty easy to follow along. And then this one I thought was really awesome too. This is a wide-eyed books, only in America, the weird, wonderful 50 states. So this goes over all the um, interesting things about a state and I think it's my, my 10 year old already started looking through it so I think this will be really fun to not just learn you know state capitals location but interesting things about the states what makes them um, unique what things came from that state so that is one we'll be utilizing as well so some fun things we will be doing in geography so I picked this up years ago this is a big felt map um, from the target dollar section and we'll be utilizing this. You can see it's 
pretty large. And we hang this on the wall. And as you can see here is I managed to keep all these tiny little things, which is a miracle in itself. But I have the little felt stick on thing. So when we go over a different region, we talk about the landmark in that part of the United States, they can stick it on and have a reference to it. And then I picked up some fun. Well, we had this game, um, the Scrambled States of America game. And it's actually really fun. And it kind of helps you figure out where things are and the shape of different states. And it's a good way to learn, um, you know, basic geography in a fun way. And it does come with the little mini book as well. There's a book that goes with it, but it comes with whoop, the mini um, book. And it tells you information about each state and kind of the story of how they got scrambled up. And you have to put them back where they belong. So I think that will be fun. My kids actually, my six-year-old even enjoys playing this game. And then when I was doing my rainbow resource order, I came across this, and I thought this looked interesting. This is Cross America Flux. So you are trying to get your goal card, and you have different keep it cards. So in order to get this goal, you need to get the Golden Gate Bridge and the Statue of Liberty, and then you would get that card. And there's different rules that are brought up through it, out it. And it just seems like, you know, again, again a fun way to learn about geography and different landmarks and different things that are in different states. And it comes with different rules and you can play different rules, different action cards. So we'll, we'll see how the kids like this one, but I thought it looked interesting. And you know, again, associating geography where things are located. And then I also picked this up, Eat Your Way Through the USA. I thought this would be fun for the kids. So when we learn a, about a different state, we can make something from that state. So they give you kind of like um, an entree, an appetizer, and then a dessert for each state. Although I have to say, my husband and I talked about the state we live in. We don't agree with the dish <laughs> that they suggested. So if you, if you see your state in here, let me know if you agree with the dish that they um, recommend. But I think this will be fun. This will be, and again, we're a gluten-free family, so I think adapting will not be difficult. Um, I've done that for the last three years, but I think it'll be a fun way to just, you know, eat across the United States. And they can pick one of the recipes. I don't think we'll have time to do all three of them unless they really want to, but I think they'll really enjoy that aspect of it. All right, the next big one would be science and we will continue to use core knowledge. We've used core knowledge science since the beginning and I will scroll through so we can see some of the topics we'll be talking about. So we have to finish the topics from fourth grade because again, we did a long human body um, unit all the way into puberty and reproduction. So we're behind on some of those levels, but again, Core knowledge is level, but you can certainly move around. You don't have to stick to your grade level, but I do want to finish the ones we didn't do. So structures and functions of living things, processes that shape the earth, usual, using natural resources for energy. Um, in fifth grade, we'll get into investigating matter. So once we finish the few units from fourth grade that we haven't, we'll go into fifth grade as well. So that'll be fun. We And both my six and 10 year old will be along for that. And again, it's more aimed for my 10 year old, obviously. But my six-year-old can definitely pick up concepts with that. And I've never had to buy any crazy materials, completely free online. It works great for us. All right, so next I'm going to get into the other subjects. So first up is music. So in July, my 10-year-old daughter will start using Hoffman Academy. I've used this the past year to teach myself how to play piano, and it's worked really well. I just use the online um, videos. I didn't have a subscription. But I got the subscription, the year subscription for my daughter because it has a lot of um, piano theory and things like that, music theory, which I'm unfamiliar with because I never, I don't remember how to read music. I'm sure I learned at some point in fourth or fifth grade, but it never stuck. So I really like the music theory aspect of it. Uh, I think the videos are great. I like the games that's incorporated. I like that you can download a lot of practice music. So she will be doing piano this year in my, um, Six-year-old won't be doing any formal music. I mean, we do have a music program through our church where the kids learn different instruments and things like that. But in homeschooling, 
we will be, my 10 year old will only be doing piano as well as I will be doing piano. For art, we are gonna be continuing using this program. Now this is an older, Adler is, I will link them below. This is an older program I bought off eBay with um, video lessons from like the 2000s something. But I like that I bought the entire set for 50 bucks. It comes with a ton of lessons. We are about to finish up a, I will link my day in a life if you wanna see kind of how we incorporated um, this, but it came with the DVDs. And again, you could choose not to use the DVDs and just use the teacher instruction, but it gives you kind of the breakdown of how to teach the lesson, the supplies needed. It gives you questions as well. And what I really like about the back is it came with different art prints on cardstock, which are in this big folder back here. But it tells you about the artist, about the artwork, and then kind of how to do um, questions and art critiques on that. So we've really actually enjoyed this program, even though this is an older version. It still works really well for my family, and it's something we will continue to utilize this upcoming year. So we do not do any type of morning basket in our family. That just It doesn't fit with our schedule. We're not those type of people. But I did want to use this with my kids, a year full of stories, 52 folk tales and legends from around the world. And I think, you know, we'll just pick out like February 14th, we'll do a story, March 1st, we'll do the story. So different if we um, remember, because let's be honest, I might not always remember. Um, just picking out these different stories from around the world, I think will be fun. Something else we started this summer that we will continue is this philosophy for kids. This has been a lot of fun. I don't know if it's because my kids have strong opinions that they like to debate, but it's really, and it's quick and it's easy. It doesn't take long. So you learn about a um, philosopher's question. Here, I showed that in my other one. Let's try a different one. We learn about a philosopher's question. Um, you talk about it, usually there's some type of quiz or questionnaire to see where you fall on that and your philosophical thinking when it comes to that. And some for further thought questions. But this has just been really fun to have open conversation with my kids about what they think. So one of them was, is it our, uh, is it our duty to give to charity? I think was the last one we just did, right? Yeah, is it our duty to give to charity? And that was just a really good um, conversation to have with them. Should you let little things bother you? And just going over different philosophical thoughts. There's no right or wrong answers when it comes to this. But I think philosophy at this age is just great. <laughs> All right, the last thing we will be incorporating, which I'm excited to get back in, is Little Justice Leaders. This is a social justice theme subscription box. I have videos on my channel where I go over this. This is not... Um, an affiliate thing or paid promotion thing. I don't do that on my channel. This is just a subscription box that I love. Um, and I love that they pull from the people or group that they're talking about. So if it's Asian Pacific Heritage Month, they'll be pulling from those voices, not somebody else's interpretation of what that is. And each of the, um, every time you buy a box, the a portion of donation goes to um, that specific organization that they're raising money for. So I really like that they're doing those types of outreach things. And my kids are learning, you know, from that perspective of that. So we've talked about various issues from, you know, pollution to pride to Asian Pacific Heritage Month, all these resources. And unfortunately, it got cut in the budget last year, so I couldn't get the box. But I put it as a budget line item for this year and we will be tackling a specific social justice themed topic every month. And it does come with a book and then um, some conversation cards. And I think they switched the format. Now you um, get a lot of resources online opposed to they used to send you some physical resources. So it's changed a bit. So I'm curious to see when I get my first box how I like the new formatting of it. Um, this is just the box that has all of my previous lessons because I keep them in here for my youngest son when he's old enough to really get a lot out of this. He'll be doing the topics we discussed. But I'm really excited to get back to these um, social justice themes. So I'll give you a couple. These are some of the cover, or this is the organization spotlight. So every month they donate to an organization like I talked about. So we've talked about different things as you can see in here, and there's different graphics we received. And again, I don't know how the format has changed um, much from that, 
but I know you still get a book and a conversation card. So I'm excited to bring that back. So that is everything for group subjects. And I have to say, I'm really excited about what we have planned this year. If you have any questions about anything I shared or want to know more, put in the comments down below. If not, thank you for watching.